the doctor is in. Salutations, friends. This is your pal again, Dr. Sal. And in today's episode of Doctor Secrets, we look at Orziga, also known as Forziga, depending on which side of the border you're on. We're going to look at the side effects. And it's an SGLT2, and um, it comes in two different strengths. You can get it in a 5 milligram or 10 milligram currently. Those are two strengths it comes in. It's the exact same drug on both sides of the border, but in one it's spelled F A R, and the other one is F O R, Forziga versus Farziga. Same drug, different name. All right, so let's jump into the side effects. Or actually, let me tell you first how it works. Um, it's a very unique, interesting uh, method of operation. What it does as the SGLT2 is it blocks the glucose transporters in your kidneys. So essentially what it does is it makes you urinate the sugar out instead of absorbing it back through your nephrons. So let's jump into the main side effects you can expect with this drug. Overall, it's very well tolerated. So most common side effect in 8.4% of people complain of, uh, sorry, this is not all people, but in females, complain of getting yeast infections. It's a lot less in males. In males, the incidence was only 2.8%. And that's just due to differences in anatomy. The reason why there tends to be an increase in yeast is if you imagine what's happening is that your urine is coming out a lot sweeter with a lot more sugar substrate in it. Bacteria and yeast love sugar. That's how we ferment things to make beer and alcoholic beverages. So due to differences in the anatomy between males and females, uh, this tends to lead to a greater preponderance of yeast infections in females. Um, and the infections are not just relegated to, to yeast infections. Um, in 5.7% of all users also complain of urinary tract infections, UTIs. So again, that again makes sense. These are both two different um, kingdoms of microbe, and they're both using sugar as fuel. So if your urine is full of it, uh, you expect you're going to see more infections. All right, next up, which actually should have been inserted here, but I just wanted to jump here to keep these guys together. In 6.6% uh, .6 of people complain of nasal pharyngitis, so nasal runny nose, stuffy nose, um, kind of nuisance upper airway symptoms. And I thought that was kind of strange because uh, this drug really shouldn't have anything to do with the respiratory epithelium. So when I drill down into it a little further, uh, what I realized is that when you look at placebo, people just taking a sugar pill, the incidence of people complain of uh, nasal symptoms in them was 6.2%. So this was for uh, nasal congestion, call it. So that's kind of interesting because these guys are just taking sugar pills and still complain of the same thing that these guys are complaining of. So that to me basically cancels out. And in practice, I've never seen anybody so far come back on Farziga or Forziga complaining of um, nasal symptoms uh, attributable to the drug. Uh, next up in um, frequency is um, in 2.9% of patients. Again, we're back to the urinary tract, complaint of increased uh, urinary frequency. So again, that makes sense. You're, you're spilling more sugar into the urine. So you expect that that's, that's going to pull out more solute as it comes out. So it drags fluid with it as it's um, retracting itself and being expelled. So that causes uh, increased urinary frequency. Uh, again, I haven't seen that uh, being a deal breaker in practice. However, I have had to um, stop some people because of these two problems here, either the recurrent yeast infections or recurrent uh, miserable urinary tract infections. <clears throat> um, next up then, the last of the most common, everything after these guys is usually like 1% or less. In 2.8%, so roughly three people in every 100 complain of nausea. And nausea in general is something that you tend to see across all drugs. Almost every drug uh, known to man or woman uh, in somebody out there is going to, the exposure to their stomach lining is going to be rejected and it's going to cause nausea or diarrhea. So that tends to be ubiquitous across all drugs. There's always a small percentage of people that just can't handle the taste of whatever that chemical is. 
So overall, as you can see, excluding the, the yeast problem, this drug is very well tolerated. So where do I typically tend to um, use it? I tend to use it, one of the advantages with the dosing is it's just once a day. Just once a day. So somebody who's looking for convenience that doesn't want to be taking tablets all through the day, for example, like metformin, uh, Farziga or Forziga is a good choice. Um, one of the things I take in consideration against it, though, is if someone does not have a drug plan, I think it runs about $100 a month. So without insurance, um, then I'll probably, instead of using this one, I'll probably use one of the other um, older, cheaper sulfonylureas or um, some big guanides like uh, metformin. So overall, very well tolerated drug in general, except for this one little blurb here. Uh, very effective and um, over time is becoming one of my um, favorite uh, diabetic drugs for type 2 diabetics. So there you have it in a nutshell, uh, folks. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk again soon. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.